The youngest of three sons, Philip Lee Roberts, was born on February 2, 1935. Even as a child growing up in Alexandria, Virginia, Philip was industrious, as his brother Alan remembers. He worked hard. I mean, he always had a job. You know, he enjoyed playing around like we did, you know, but, but he was a bit more serious. And uh, saved money and, uh, you know, basically almost paid his own way through college and, and, and also part of Priscilla's college. Uh, I mean, I don't know how he did it, you know, he, he drove ice cream trucks and uh, he brought watermelons up from our uncle's farm and, and uh, you know, uh, boxcar loads of watermelon was selling them up there. <laughs> it was, it was, I mean, he did a lot of things. He didn't make a lot of money at that, but he was a good try. Many summers were spent working on his uncle Bob's farm in Donisonville, Georgia, where Philip's parents grew up and where cousins remain today. It was his uncle who encouraged Philip to continue his education. After high school, he entered ABAC, a school that holds a very special place in his heart. With a degree in agriculture, Philip entered the University of Georgia. It was there that he met and married Priscilla Land, and there that he changed his career path from veterinary to human medicine. Completing pre-med courses and with Priscilla's degree in education, the young couple headed to Augusta with their first son, Larry. By the time Philip graduated from the Medical College of Georgia and started his internship at Spartanburg General, he and Priscilla had completed their family with two additional sons, Paul and David. If it hadn't been for the, for the draft, the Army draft, he would never have been a cancer doctor because he, was, uh, he and Priscilla were already m moving to Baltimore and he was going to do um, a pediatric residency at Johns Hopkins. But then he got drafted and we got, went to the Army, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but he decided he would be a, an, an internist. And so he, he trained while he was in the Army as an internist. And then when he got out, he, then he went to Boston and uh, trained as, um, as a hematologist and oncologist. He, spayed, he stayed up there until his kids, I guess until all of them graduated from high school. He just wanted to leave that area. He wanted to come down here. And I remember when he first came into Albany, there's a little, tiny little place over in Jefferson Street. There was, there was no other hematologist in this area at that time. Hundreds of patients came to Dr. Robert Storr for the help of healing physicians and staff. For 10 years, Priscilla served as his office manager and was one of the main movers when the practice relocated to 503rd Avenue. You can't even d describe the compassion he has for his patients, uh, and all of them. I mean, just, just everybody he treats. He would call at night to check on how things were. He'd make house calls occasionally, unannounced, just to be sure everything was all right. Phil only recruited good people, okay? whether it was a physician or somebody to work on the floor with him. It didn't make any difference. He really, really wanted good people. Uh, I would describe Dr. Roberts as a very selfless, a guy who uh, is not particularly pretentious, whose f whole focus is taking care of his patients. So I've known him in many different roles and have always considered him a mentor, a teacher, uh, a colleague, a friend, and probably one of the hardest working individuals that I know. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, there's certain people that, that change a town, that change the way people live and make things better. And you never can anticipate what the world would have been like if they weren't there because you're just so used to being there. Well, Dr. Roberts did that for cancer services. You know, for my own personal family, you know, he's a guy I go to to get the best advice on how to take care of these very scary situations. One out of two people in this audience today, one of two people hearing this message are going to get cancer. And so when he tries to do something for cancer services, it's not just to treat that one patient, it's actually to try to reduce the impact of cancer in the entire community. Well, it was just a, a mass of, uh, of sick people uh, that had come to, uh, to see Dr. Roberts for treatment. You could hardly get to his office for the number of people that were in the waiting room and overflowing out into the hallways. And How he could even come close to handling that uh, that kind of crowd, I cannot imagine. He, I don't know what kind of hours he must have been working, but it had to be from, uh, from early morning till uh, late at night. The son David got cancer and died, their son. And, um, and at that point, he didn't know what to do, you know. 
he, he decided he, he was going to get rid of that practice. Um, it just was, you know, just the whole thing was emotionally was with him and Priscilla. So he, he, I guess he talked to Joel. There's two things I want to make sure on my grave, gravestone. One is I was old fashioned and the other one was I had a role in keeping Philip Roberts in Albany. And ultimately we struck an arrangement with Philip that had the hospital very heavily involved in his practice while at the same time freeing him up from many of the things that aggravate physicians to this day and that's the business of medicine. We know that your schedule is, uh, is very busy yet you found the time to uh, make us feel important. Dr. Roberts puts the same commitment into his free time as he does his work. Whether earning the prestigious Peachtree Road Race t-shirt, taking on a mighty river, or roasting marshmallows in the backyard, the Roberts family enjoys every opportunity to spend time together. Now for those of you who don't know Dr. Roberts, um, one could describe him as very frugal. Uh, I used to call him the Jack Benny of medical oncology. But anyway, I was coming to Albany and doing a view for the job, and I was staying at the Mary Acres. And the administrator said, well, Dr. Roberts is our medical oncologist, and he's going to come by and pick you up and take you to the hospital to make rounds. And I had this picture in my mind of this guy in a very fancy suit and a nice car and everything pulling up to Mary Acres. So um, I was standing out there, and <clears throat> up pulls this old orange Volkswagen with this guy sitting in the, in the car. Now, he did have a suit on. He's got this car, it's uh, late May, there's no air conditioning in the car, and he said, you know, I'm Dr. Roberts, Chuck, just hop on in and we'll go down to Phoebe. I said, all right, so I hopped in the car and he's driving down uh, Dawson Road and I looked down and I could see the asphalt, the pavement, through the floorboards of the car because the whole bottom of the car was rusted out. Dr. Roberts is a person with uh, many great attributes and talents, but uh, one thing he is not, however, he is not a golfer. Phil, it's uh, rumored that Tom Sullivan's going to require that that your foursome in this year's Lopez Hospice Tournament tee off at 6 a.m. in order to ensure completion of your round before the award presentation at 6 p.m. I knew when I met this man that he was a very special person. Calm, confident, friendly, engaging, visionary, and humble. He would have made a hell of a Marine. Phil, you're one of the doctors that I very much look up to and uh, I've always tried to be like you. It's not easy. Not everybody has your energy and enthusiasm and optimism, especially dealing with what you deal with. So from one doctor to another doctor, hats off to you, Phil. You've done a fantastic job. First of all, I think that no one deserves an honor like this more than Philip Roberts. and. I hope that it will convey to Philip and to his wife and to his family how much the medical community, how much Phoebe and Phoebe's board and the administration and the medical staff appreciate the magnitude of what he's done with his life of service to cancer patients. To have this pavilion named for you. Uh, is certainly just reward for all the things that you have done for the patients and the community and the entire region. I think you have set a very high standard for patient care and for caring, and I congratulate you. Philip, uh, we have all learned much from you. Uh, what we are all experiencing here together this evening in this fine new facility, you know, is the culmination of your vision of your hard work, uh, your uh, persistence, and I can't say many more words other than how proud it is for me to be part of uh, having your name on a part of Phoebe Putney uh, for eternity. You know, David thought a lot of his father um, enough, you know, as, watched him as a doctor and enough so that he went into medicine himself. So I know he would be so proud, you know, of him um, in this honor. Congratulations, we love you, Grandpa. Dad, I, this is uh, uh, an honor for you, I'm, I'm sure, and I congratulations, and I, I know you're, you know, you worked hard all these years, and 
hopefully this will be something that people will remember you by for decades to come. I've never met a man or a person who's given so much and asked for so little in return, especially recognition. So I suppose that makes this day that much more special for you. We love you.